Hello, YouTubers, and happy Saturday morning. It seems like it's only been a few weeks or less since I showed you how you can rewire these delightful old rotary phones to ring on modern phone lines. Today, I have something even more exciting in store to share with all of you subscribers and viewers out there. Tonight, I'm going to show you how you can use these wonderful old rotary telephones, indestructible 1930s, 40s technology to work as regular voice over IP headsets. That's right, you can use a rotary phone as a perfectly good voice over IP phone. And the key to this is getting what's called a pulse dial proficient or pulse dial capable analog telephone adapter like this Grandstream HT801 that I have here. Modern phones will transmit digits as DTMF, or you know where the, the touch tone term comes from, dual tone multi-frequency with different tones for particular digits. But rotary phones don't do that. They use what's called pulse dialing. Let me demonstrate that on this rotary phone. Say I want to dial a zero, I go, I take the uh, hole for the zero position and roll the dial all the way down to, to the end and then let it go back and you'll hear, hear it, hear the spring uh, rewinding it back to its original position. But what happened there, what happened with those pulses is the switch inside of here that I'll show in a future video was, was was completed and, and uh, broken, the circuit was completed and broken 10 times in a second. This is a 10 hertz dial, and that's where the pulse idea comes from. It's regularly spa at regularly spaced intervals, switching on and off a number of times to give you a zero in the case of 10 times, or say five in the case of five times. Different number of pulses, different digit, totally different from on DTMF. And that's why most ATAs that you'll try to use with rotary phones will do incoming it only, not outgoing, because it's not going to be able to decode, you know, that those different number of pulses at uh, 10 hertz. Uh, something else to note about this that that I I, I think I'll point this out in the grand stream configuration is um, US phones are set to be 10 hertz. I think European ones and Australian are 12 hertz, which obviously means the decoding isn't going to be the same and you need to alter the respective setting on the grand stream. That's one of several reasons I'd highly recommend the grand stream 500, 700, and 800 series that, that will translate pulses in addition to tones into digits because you can adjust this for, I think, New Zealand or Swedish calibrated uh, dials. Anyway, so so that's what pulse dialing is. A number of in the US 10 hertz pulses that match to a digit. And I explained how it's different from DTMF and why you need to get a special analog telephone adapter that will convert pulses into digits translated over SIP. Just for review, an analog telephone adapter will convert a voice over IP service connected through uh, Ethernet or, or Wi-Fi into a regular 48 volt uh, phone signal. Ringing and voice and incoming uh, digits being dialed. A uh, nice feature of the Grand Stream is that it's powered off micro USB. Just for reference, the left lamp uh, LED here is showing that it's registered with a SIP service. In this case, my home PBX. It is on and it has an internet connection provided by a router that might make itself famous in another video. This uh, Netgear router set up in client mode. It has a Wi-Fi connection. It's, it's not serving up one. It's connecting to Wi-Fi as a client. Uh, it's connecting to the router in another room and then providing Ethernet connections on the back. One for the laptop to my left and one for the ATA. Anyway, so with that said, let's get to configuration. I will use 
my login. Uh, the grand stream can be configured by SSH or HTTP. Uh, it's pretty easy to configure either way, and uh, I hi again highly recommend this if you want to do pulse dialing because you can customize the 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 dialing frequency to I think ten or twelve hertz. You can adjust the ring frequency, which is 20 hertz for the U.S., and I think 25 for Europe, and enable high ring power. There's some ATAs that just don't have enough oomph to get your rotary phone beautiful uh, bell sound that we heard earlier uh, ringing. Anyway, so this is the main status page. You can see I've, I upgraded this to the most recent firmware, which is really important in order to get that pulse dialing capability and some other options to tweak it. And it's, it's doing great. It's registered the FXS port. For those who don't know, that connects to a station or a telephone, whereas FXL connects to an office or a landline. Anyway, the FXS port, our phone port, is on hook. It's, uh, you know, no dial tone. I don't have the, the, the headset off. I, and I have it registered with my local PBX. Um, okay. Let's just skip through here. Yeah, that's just for web and you could configure over web or SSH and then some more things. I think I've had to adjust some timeouts here. And and this is a grand stream issue, not pulse dialing, and just some timeouts so I don't have calls that are dropped after say fifteen minutes. Yeah, okay, so that's web walkout duration. This the SIP session timing was under FXS port. Um, yeah, so it's connected to my home PBX. Uh, and none of you can do that. Um, that's going to be the topic of a future video. A quick tangent about it. I recently set up Google Voice as a trunk. It's a highly restricted trunk. Um, I'm not doing anything against their terms of service like evading long distance charges. I'm only using a small number of, you know, three to five extensions. Uh, but that is actually connected to the public switching telephone network. Um, for demonstration here, I'm just going to show extension to extension, but in a future video, I'll show you how you can set up a free uh, PSTN trunk into your PBX and everything you have to do to be safe and, and not violate any of Google Voice's terms and conditions. Um, and that works quite well. Anyway, so lots of SIP things here, but let me get to the key, key ideas. Um, uh, ideas. Settings. Well, what do we want to do? Uh, we want to do pulse dialing. So something you want to do is, is enable pulse dialing. Gee whiz. Again, general standard here. Um, you could use, I think, Swedish is for European telephones, so for viewers in Europe, and then New Zealand standard for um, Australian telephones. I guess that's, again, I believe it's 12 hertz pulses for dialing in Europe, and I'm not sure for Australia. It, it could, uh, there's also differences in the make-break ratio. I think it's, um, well, I'll have to double check on that, but there's different proportions of time in the pulse where the switch is closed versus opened. And that's the whole make-break ratio, proportion of, of closed time versus open time. A very, very important saying that I notice a lot of people in the forums um, miss is hook flash. There are people who would say, uh, you know, grand streams work with pulse dialing, that's great, but um, I can't get my digits properly to code. This happened to me as well. After talking to friends in another form in the Discord server I run, I found the solution. The solution is turning off or at least altering the timing of hook flash. A hook flash is a quick pulse that's sent when you want to set up a conference call, you know, linking two calls together or uh, put a call on hold. 
Uh, it's the idea is you know you rapidly disconnect and, and reconnect and get a dial tone. Remember, it's it's ten hertz in order to it, 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 the it's it's ten hertz in order to, to uh, the the pulses in order to generate a digit. <laughs> excuse me. Are, are, are 10 hertz. So dialing a zero would take 10, uh, ten it, it, it's 10 pulses and then um, 10 pulses in a second, so one second. Imagine if you have a hook flash that's shorter than a second. That disconnection, reconnection is a pulse and that's going to mess up your digits and possibly get them concatenated together. And then you're not dialing the right number, and you get you know a, um, a tone back telling you that your your uh, number couldn't be connected as 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 dialed. Anyway, so what's the solution? I just turned it off. Um, I've tried on another ATA to alter the flash timing and and bump it up to around a second. I think probably you want to go for something like 1.5 seconds. It didn't work. It worked from 900 milliseconds to one second on the, on another ATA, the Linksys WRTP54G, but here it didn't. So maybe, you know, try it. If you want a hook flash, say for another phone, if this had two ports, try doing something like 1.5 seconds. Um, okay. So then the other things is make sure ring frequency is 20 hertz. Make sure you have high ring power. Um, and then besides that, um, I don't think there's anything else. If, again, a grand stream specific thing, increase the, the call um, duration that's available, you know, says no limit. And then uh, SIP sessions to keep those from, from locking out. Anyway, so that's all good. Um, yeah, so uh, one last thing, and this is the really exciting feature this offers that the InnoMedia does, but Winxis pulse dialing capable ATAs don't. What's that feature? You can decode pulses in a call. You don't just decode pulses in order to call someone. During a call, say do a phone tree, you could press one, press one for you know, the front desk or something. You can dial one on the rotary phone and then have that translated into a one in a phone tree. That's right. You can do pulse dialing for in-call interactive voice response. Super exciting. This was one of the main reasons I remember as a kid. I got sick of our rotary phone really quickly, uh, you know, it's, it uh, might have stopped working as far as a uh, dialing or maybe not, but I just knew you couldn't do anything with a um, phone tree with it. I thought, you know, this is obsolete now. Thankfully, I kept that phone and I can use it now that I, I have SIP services that will let you do um, pulse dialing in call to go through IVR. Anyway, so how do you set that up? Well, you want to get, um, if I can find it, SIP info. Um, might have to go to a menu. Oh, here we go. Yeah, I did search for that. Under preferred DTMF method, you could do in audio and have an actual translation of the digit into a DTMF tone. But all that you need, and I think the... Uh, highest fidelity option is SIP info as DTMF. That means that when you dial a digit and it's decoded into a SIP event that's that will will be transferred into DTMF. So so whatever's it has been translated as a digit and count as SIP info is also um, set as as DTMF during a call. That counts as a digit that would be touch tone. Uh, RFC 2833, I think, is just uh, actual touch tone, and then in audio, I think, is conversion of the SIP into an actual tone in the call. Although I've tried that, and I don't think I've, I've um, heard it, but I believe that was before I fixed hook flash. Anyway, so those are all the key features you need to set up. Um, 
So again, you turn off hook flash, make sure you enable pulse dialing. And besides that, also make sure that you have, have 20 hertz for ring frequency, 10 hertz or standard for the, the dialing pulse frequency, and then have high ring power so you can ring the bell. And with that, I'm going to do a quick demonstration and wrap up the video. I have two clients here below us um, connected to my PBX system. And let's dial each of them and demonstrate the power of pulse dialing. Pulse dialing on a home PBX. Okay. So I'll take my ES400 that's registered and dial up. Maybe you can see that. I'll, I'll just go down and zoom. My dial extension 701, which is the rotary phone. Okay. As you can tell, that worked. So inbound calls work, which is not surprising. That just shows you, again, the ringer, it, can, it works, and there's enough power and the right frequency to give you a nice ring. It's muffled since, you know, this is on carpet, and again, there's plastic sleeves on those, those bells. And I don't know, maybe I need to tweak that a bit more. Anyway, so now let's do something super cool. Let's do some pulse dialing from the rotary phone. There you go. So I can dial another number with the rotary phone. Um, I don't think I have have a good enough mic to do it, but you can also dial into voicemail with this. I, I have this configured as a Google Voice number. I also have it set up with my SDF extensions, and I can indeed traverse the phone tree in voicemail to move messages around and pick messages to listen to. And it's super awesome. You could if you want use this in something like home automation and you know have a phone tree for or or not even a phone tree extensions for talking to alexa or turning on and off different lights and appliances but again a famous setting a famous saying excuse me that everyone should remember is the s in iot stands for security so if you're going to do that Make sure you have some security, and as IoT famously doesn't, maybe don't do it. Anyway, so I hope that gives you all some ideas. Um, Grandstream ATAs are pretty inexpensive. Mine was $15 for shipping from eBay. Quite affordable. You could use Linksys ones. The RTP 300s are really common. The WRTP 54Gs are common. But as far as I know, those don't support SIP info as a DTMF method. So you won't be able to do in-call IVR traversal. That said, I hope this inspires you to take your old, wonderful, classic, kitschy, whirly mabobs and connect them to your VoIP systems. Uh, hopefully this was informative and easy to follow. If you have any comments or questions about this, leave them in the comments section down below. And as always, please like and subscribe. Take care, everybody.